Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a Halloween globe. So we have super easy, fun, festive painting for you. Um, you're going to need a circle to trace. So I used this bowl in this painting to trace this circle. Um, it's about six and three quarter inches in diameter. You can find something that's six inches, seven inches, something just similar in size, doesn't have to be exact. And I'll be going over the colors that I use. These are Liquitix Basics colors. You can use whatever brand you have available. So we'll be using Mars Black, Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Titanium White, um, some of these colors can actually be customized. These ones here at the bottom um, have a little bit more flexibility in what you want to do with them. So Prism Violet is what I use for the base of the snow globe. Primary Yellow, I only use that for the candy corn, so you only need a little bit of Primary Yellow. Um, these three sort of neon colors, uh, Brilliant Yellow Green, Medium Magenta, and Light Red Hue, for the neon colored windows. Uh, again, you could simplify those by only using one or all three if you like that look. I used a one inch flat brush. I use that mostly for the background. I used a number four round brush and I used a number 12 bright brush. This brush right here was super helpful. It's a little detail three slash zero round brush. Little tiny details inside of the snow globe. And I also used a black Posca paint pen. That one was also super helpful in the lettering and some of the other smaller details. We are going to get started. And the first thing that we need to do is draw a table line. So I am measuring three inches from the bottom of this. And this is just a regular pencil that I'm using. So I'm gonna mark three inches. And then I'm gonna do two more marks and draw a horizontal line. Next, you want to load your palette with the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent, Titanium White, and Mars Black. So green, white, and black. We're going to make a kind of a blended gray green background. So this is a one inch flat brush that has been loaded in water. I kind of tapped it dry on the palette. So I'm going to mix about equal parts green and white together and then add in a little bit of black. You just wanna be very, very careful not to add too much black, but that little bit of black is going to create this kind of gray green color. And what I like to do is kind of vary that. So I'm going to fill this whole background using diagonal strokes, using the full width of the brush. If you want to change the background to where it's not all diagonal, if you want them to go like blended, cross hatching, or going up and down, or left and right, whatever creative thing you want to do to the background, you're most certainly welcome to change it. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm doing diagonal strokes throughout the entire background. So everything above that table line is the background that I'm talking about. And I'm varying that color. So there's some areas where it's just that green. Some areas there's a little bit, a few streaks of extra white, maybe a few streaks of extra black slash gray in there. So we have kind of a blended look where it's not all solid the same color, gives that background a little bit more interest versus if we just painted it solid the same color throughout. So when you're adding the little bits of black you just want to make sure you're doing teeny tiny bits that black will spread super fast and we're just gently blending that on the canvas. If you end up painting over that line, that's okay because we can always go back and repaint over it. You just wanna make sure that everything is filled up above the line. There's no blank spots left on the canvas. I'm just going in with the white, just kind of blending that here and there, giving that color variation in the background. 
Next, I'm going to paint the horizontal table area and we don't even need to rinse our brush for this. So grab your Mars Black and start filling in that horizontal area on the bottom. So let, I like to use the tip of the brush to really kind of cut in first, very carefully going left and right. A little bit of water in there, kind of smooth that black out a bit. But just use the tip of the brush and you can define that line. Painter's tape would also work for this. If you wanted to let that background dry and then use painter's tape, you're welcome to do it that way. And then everything gets filled up with the Mars Black. I am going to blend a little bit of white in this too so that we also get some color variation in the table and also that it's not solid black. I know that later on I want to add some shadow to this um, from the globe. So I want to make that table color just a tad bit lighter so that when I paint the shadow, it'll show up. So everything kind of in the back towards that line was pretty solid black, but I'm gonna add some of this titanium white to my palette Without rinsing the brush, I'm going to grab that white and apply that white on the bottom. It's going to turn into a medium to dark gray. And we're just going to blend that up into the black. So we now have a black gray table area. So that now that when I want to paint some darker shadows under my objects, that will show up against kind of that lighter area. Just a few more streaks of that white in there, but I'm gonna be careful not to over blend it because then, then it'll turn all in the same color. We don't really want that. You will need to let all of this dry before going on to the next step. We will be drying our snow globe next. So I'll be using this bowl to trace the circle. As mentioned earlier, it's about six and three quarter inches in diameter. You can use something similar in size. You can be seven inches, six inches. So find something similar to trace. You can even use a compass if you have a compass. And I'm gonna position it so that it is center but also the bottom of the circle is about four and a half inches from the bottom of the canvas and tracing that circle pretty firmly so that I can see it and also so that you can see it on the camera. Um, you could actually trace it lightly if you prefer, just as long as you can see it. And then I'm gonna sketch the base of the globe. So I'm gonna do a simple kind of like curve on both sides of that and that'll be the base just under the circle. The width of this is about four and a quarter and then two diagonal lines going down on each side. I'm going to try to make them symmetrical and then another curved line. So these ones down here go out kind of curved and I'm going to actually redraw this with a white chalk so that you can see it a little bit better on the camera. Um, but the height of that base is about three and a half inches from the base, very bottom to the, the bottom of that, the circle. So this one is like this kind of curved rectangle area. curves and then there's two curves on each side on the edges and these are our diagonal lines. So we have the base of the snow globe. And next let's load our palette with some fresh titanium white and I'll be using a number four round brush. So we are going to paint or outline our circle first with white. So what I just drew with the white or with the pencil I'm just going to paint with white. So again, this is a number four round brush and just using the tip of the brush to outline that circle. Um, the line stays pretty consistent throughout 
Although if there's some inconsistencies with it, like if there's some areas where you are pressing harder so the line's thicker and then an area where it's thinner because you press lighter, that's okay too. It does not have to be perfectly consistent. It just needs to be visible. And next we are going to paint the base of our snow globe. So I used the color Prism Violet. If you want to change the color, you're, you can do exactly what I'm doing, but with a different color. We'll also be using Titanium White to help create some highlights in this base color. So I'm gonna start by using the number four round brush and not even rinsing that brush. I'm gonna load it into the purple. So there's purple and white on my brush at this point. So if you're using a different color, like orange, you would do orange and white on the brush. And I'm just going to start by painting this curvy area that is just below the globe. And I'm using the purple with the white on the brush and letting those colors kind of blend together. So we're contouring these strokes. That just means that it's going in the direction of the curve. So it's relatively the same color throughout, although I'm going to do this on purpose. I'm gonna grab some more titanium white. I'm gonna add white just on the bottom part of this curve because I want this area to stand out from the area that's just below it. And I'm gonna eventually switch my brush to a 12 bright brush because this would take forever to fill in with this little round brush. But I went ahead and I outlined these two diagonal lines and I'm using just the purple. So it's a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna outline this part right here with the purple. But again, I'm not gonna fill this in because I'm gonna to switch to a bigger brush that would be much more effective at filling this shape in. I'm gonna do the bottom piece. So just like how that top piece, I added a little bit more white in there so that it will stand out. I'm gonna do the same thing down here using a little bit more white, but using white and purple on the brush, letting those blend. See how this is lighter than that darker color above it that gets it to stand out better. Still loading some purple on the brush, but again, this area is more like a light purple. Letting the purple and the white blend together, and I'm using my round brush to paint in a curved direction, letting those colors kind of blend together. So now I'm ready to switch to my 12 bright brush. That's this little flat brush. I'm gonna load it in the water, squeeze excess water out, and grab my purple. So in this area where we have that table line, we're going to need to add white to our brush, and that's going to help with the coverage of that dark table area 
and then you have the lighter background. If you mix white with purple, it will give coverage and you won't see that table line through your snow globe base. But you want to make sure that your strokes are going in a curved direction. That's gonna give your globe base a little bit more form. So it's not gonna make it look flat, it's gonna make it look kind of 3D. And you're letting that purple and white kind of blend together. The area below that top kind of curvy piece is a little bit darker on purpose. And same with the area on the bottom, a little bit darker in that area as well. You can use the tip of that brush to go on the edges and kind of drag that inwards, but still make sure you're curving your strokes. I'm gonna wipe my brush and not rinse it, but wipe it and load my brush in just the purple. So wipe, grab just the purple. And then I'm just gonna use that to kind of add some darker areas, but also using that tip of the brush to drag it and curve it inwards. So this all needs to dry before we can paint the little name plate that's on it. What's gonna say Happy Halloween or a family name or whatever you want it to say. I'm gonna rinse the 12 Bright brush and let's start working on all the objects that are inside of the snow globe. So we will be using Mars Black and a number four round brush for this. I am going to start by painting the ground. So loading your number four round brush in the Mars Black and we're painting the ground. So everything in the snow globe is just like we're painting on a canvas, like painting a picture. So don't worry about the glare or anything else that comes last. Right now we're just painting what's inside the globe. And all I'm doing is painting this ground area. So like a little wavy line. And taking that, I'm leaving like a little slither of green kind of showing through at the bottom um, inside circumference of the circle. And you don't want to paint over any of that white line so everything is inside of that white line. Nothing goes on the outside. And we can start building our haunted house. So haunted houses are very simple to do. We can start, think of it like shape by shape. We can start with the base and do a rectangle. And then we can start building off of this. So we can do like a little triangle over here on the side and another little triangle on the right if we want it to be symmetrical. And then we can continue building this up. We can do another little rectangle in between. So this piece goes up and because it's a silhouette it's very forgiving because we're just painting it solid black it's a little square rectangle and then we can do another little rectangle that towers up and just building this up you're definitely welcome to change what's inside of the snow globe if you want to do like a jack-o-lantern or a graveyard instead or if you want to change the style of the house Another little triangle. And maybe we can fit another little triangle on each side of this middle tower. And then we have another vertical tower piece with a triangle. Or let's do like, let's make a little rectangle up here and then add a triangle on top of that. 
So it looks like a little standalone tower. Or maybe this tower has a bridge that attaches to the main house. So we can do like a little bridge. Um, this doesn't have to be exactly in symmetrical. I do want to put a tree on the left side of this. So I'm going to also use the black and this brush to start painting this tree. So start, put a little bit of water on my brush and loosen that black up a bit. I like to do that when I'm gonna do trees because of all the branches. So we have swirly branch lines. So we started with a chunk that was a little bit thicker at the base and then it curves and just kind of goes to a point. So you're just taking your brush and you start your brush out a little bit thick, but then you release the pressure, like you're holding the brush very, very light when you let that branch curl and come to a point. So when you hold your brush light, you create thinner strokes. When you hold your brush hard, you create thicker strokes. Kind of the trick with these branches is changing how hard or how light you're holding the brush. So I'm going for kind of like a swirly tree effect. And that is basically the first layer of what we're doing inside the snow globe. We need to let this dry before we can add any more details to it. So while this is drying, I'm going to use a pencil to draw out my spider web. There's a spider web outside of our snow globe. I'm going to draw a scalloped line that starts at the top, curves to a point that connects to the globe, so two points, another line that goes off the canvas, and then two diagonal lines that go from the points that are touching the circle to a corner, the upper right corner of the canvas. And then in between those two diagonal lines, I'm gonna do these curved lines that connect to each other to create the spider web effect. I know this is kind of hard to see with the pencil, if I kind of tilt it a certain way, you can kind of see. And then we have kind of a looped line that our spider is attached to, but I'm actually gonna paint this in with the white, just so you can see this better. And actually we are painting this in white anyway. So this, just like what we did with the snow globe and outlined with the white, I'm using the same brush, number four round brush and titanium white. So there's my scalloped line. And then here's my two diagonal lines. So both of those lines go to the upper right corner. And then my curved lines in between and those attach together. And then next we have this curvy line over here where our spider will be. So it's curving in down and we're gonna stop about here um, and then paint the black spider in another step. So this is not 100% dry, but the edges are. I'm actually using a black paint pen to kind of sharpen up my edges, especially the roof, make those triangles more pointy and defined. So I found using that black paint pen helpful for this. And we can also draw bats with this. So if you want bats inside of your snow globe, we can use the black paint pen to draw little bat wings. And then you can fill it in solid. So I'm gonna do another one over here. Curved line, three scalloped lines, a little oval for the body and two little pointy ears on the body. Next, I'm going to paint the cute little spider and he's actually kind of a big spider. And I'm using the number four round brush. I'm gonna start by doing like a little kind of circle oval shape, more like an oval shape. 
that is attached to that loopy white web line that we did. For the legs, we can use the paint pen. So it's two legs down here are on the globe. The other ones are kind of just sticking up. Um, and you can change the style of this spider if you want. So do four legs on each side. And we need to let this dry before doing the details on the spider, like the face. So I'm gonna set my paint pen to the side and get a three slash zero round brush. This is a little detail brush. And I'm gonna use titanium white to paint all my windows and doors. So these are going to be all neon colors, but in order for that to look bright and neon, we need to do white as the base layer first. So all of the windows, doors on the haunted house have the white. So I did a lot of circles in the triangular areas. Again, you can change the design of this if you want. So you can add more windows, less windows. So all of them get a little white circle inside of the triangle. And we can do another big window above the door. And then two more arch style windows. And this needs to dry before we can add our neon colors over it. So we're gonna let that dry, but while that's drying, we can paint little ghosts. So I'm gonna use the same brush in the same titanium white to paint little ghosts. No arms. And then we can do a second ghost. If you want to do many ghosts, you can. It's up to you. You can change all kinds of things inside of this snow globe. And this one also gets little arms. While that is drying, I'm going to paint the base layer for all of the little candy corn. So I thought about putting other candies down here as well, like little lollipops and little hard candies. That's something that you can do if you wanna change it. But for this demonstration, I'm just doing candy corn. So I'm using the same brush and the white to paint little triangles kind of scattered throughout the table area. It helps to just kind of outline the triangle first and the bottom line of that triangle gets like a curved line versus a straight line. And then you can make your corners a little bit rounded. So now that needs to dry before we can add our colors to the candy corn. Um, what I'm going to do next is use my 12 bright brush. That's the brush we used earlier to paint the snow globe purple base. I'm going to add black to it and I want to do shadow under my 
candy corn as well as my base. So I'm just taking this black and I'm doing very loose kind of curved strokes going left and right under the snow globe base. And because we made the table area a little bit lighter in that area, it should show up. And then a few kind of loose left and right strokes under each of the candy corn that's going to create shadow in your table area. Next, you want to make sure things are dry. Um, my ghosts are drying relatively quickly, so I'm gonna use the black to paint their eyes. So this is the three zero little detail brush. And I'm just doing two little black ovals for the eyes. I'm gonna do simple little mouth on the ghosts as well. And we can start adding our colors for our windows. So this is the color Brilliant Yellow Green. It's going to show up as a really pretty bright kind of lime green color. This also works really well with neon paints. So if you happen to have neon paints, you can definitely use those or even like glow in the dark paint would look really cool for this painting. So I did the door with the lime green color and a few of the windows. I am going to rinse my color or my brush between colors and for the orange, this is Cad Red Light. If you want to use just a regular orange, you can. If you have a neon orange, that would look really pretty for this. So this one shows up really bright. After I move my hand, you can see very bright color. Um, so some of the windows got that. And then the other remaining windows are medium magenta. If you have a neon pink, that would look really pretty. Even though these aren't technically neon colors, they still kind of give the effect of neon because of the dark silhouette and the fact that we painted the base layer white, they still show up very bright. Because this is a snow globe, I'm going to do little confetti pieces. So instead of snow, these are like fall leaves. So I'm doing this with the orange. If you want to add yellow to your palette to make some yellow little dots, you can. And this is the number four round brush. I'm just doing little dots kind of all throughout our snow globe. Some little dots could be settled on the bottom. You can use a titanium white and mix your orange with that to create some lighter colors in your little dots. You can also make them kind of inconsistent. So some might be bigger, some might be smaller, some might be more scattered apart, some might be kind of dense and closer together. Some might even be overlapping the tree or the house. There's still more detail that I would like to do to my haunted house, um, but I need to let everything dry before doing that. My candy corn, those are ready to paint. So I'm gonna use the yellow. So this is primary yellow and a number four round brush. I am painting the bottom of each of the candy corn or the, the wider part of the candy corn, yellow. And as in painting them, my strokes are going in kind of a curved direction. That's gonna give your candy corn more of shape if you do them curved. Then our center line will be orange and I'm using that cad red light color.
and we are leaving the remainder of it white. In this next step, I will be using that black paint pen again. By the way, if you don't have a black paint pen, you can use a black Sharpie for this. Kind of does the same thing. Um, you want to 100% make sure your windows are dry. Um, because your pen will end up smearing, especially because there's so many layers on these windows. You really want to make sure all those layers are dry because it will end up smudging your windows and those lines won't go all the way across. So like this one, for example, ended up not being dry completely. And then there's paint on my paint pen. And when you get paint on the paint pen, it ends up not working for a little bit. You need to wipe that paint off in order to get it to work again. So again, you want to just make sure as you're doing this, everything is dry. If you need to use like a hair dryer to dry it real quick or take a long break and come back, because sometimes it takes a long time for all those layers to dry. So that's what I did. I just did a plus sign on all the windows. I made a little doorknob on the door. You can even use the pen to kind of re-outline your windows. So if your color went outside the lines, you can... Uh, fix that with the paint pen. Next, I am going to do the detail on the spider. So using the little three zero round brush and titanium white, painting two little circles for the spider's eyes. We're doing a cute little bubbly cartoon style spider. You want to change this? You're welcome to. A little dot for the nose, a little curve for the mouth. And I did two little triangle teeth. And this needs to dry before we can do any more detail to it. I'm gonna rinse and grab my 12 bright brush and I'm going to paint the little um, name plate that's on our snow globe. So using the tip of the brush and the white, I'm just gonna drag my brush across the globe, but going in a curved direction. So the whole shape of this is curved and then I can form the shape. Those edges on the far right and left should be parallel to the edges of the snow globe. So those little, those di diagonal lines on the edge of the snow globe need to be parallel to the diagonal lines on the edge of this little name plate. I'm just using the white to slowly kind of form that shape. And then when this dries, I'm gonna write Happy Halloween on it. You are welcome to change whatever writing you wanna put on it, like a family name or spooky season. So while that's drying, I'm going to go back and add some more curves in my spider web using that three zero round brush and the white. Just taking that white and adding more curves in there. Does not have to be symmetrical. There can be extra curves in one area and not extra curves in others. And next I'm going to show you how to paint the glare on the snow globe. So this is my favorite part of painting snow globe paintings or any kind of painting where there's an illusion of glass. Let's make sure everything's dry. You don't want to accidentally smear anything that you did on the inside of the snow globe. So everything has to be 100% dry for this to work. Let's use our 12 bright brush and you'll need a cloth in your hand. So I'm holding a, a soft cloth in my left hand and you want to load your brush in the white and then you want to wipe off a lot of that paint because you only want a little bit of paint on your brush. So after you wiped off the paint, start out very lightly at first and paint a curved line. So you should get the illusion of a dry brush curved line and see how it paints over the objects. So let's do another one down here going to create the illusion that it's glass glare and it's going to make everything that we painted inside of that circle look like make it's going to make it look like it's inside of the globe. So I'm going to do another curved. It's okay if we have a really bright almost opaque white line but for the most part all of these 
should be very see-through, very translucent. So see how bright the ghosts are? Our glare is not that bright, not that opaque. It needs to be very, very light and see-through. And we create that effect by wiping the brush off before we do our paint stroke. I'm using just the tip of the brush and I'm holding it very lightly. You might find that you wanna press harder in some areas to make your glare maybe a little bit brighter in some areas. And I did this just on the outer part of the circle. I didn't do anything on the center. It's just on the inside edges of the circle. So now we can do more detail work on our spider. I'm gonna go back to my little detail brush and do the inside of the eyes purple. So this is that prism violet color. So a purple circle on the inside of the eyes. And this needs to dry before doing anything else to the eyes. I'm gonna make kind of like a bubbly effect with the eyes, but I need that purple layer to dry first. We can, if our little plate on the snow globe is dry, we can use a paint pen. I'm going to write Happy Halloween on this. Again, you can change this. You can write your family name on it. You can write pretty much whatever you want. I'm squeezing my letters in there to fit. Um, if you don't feel comfortable just writing it out, you can do it in pencil first and then go back over with the pen. I'm gonna do little four circles on each corner, little nails. And then on the far right edge, I did a little outline on the outside. It's gonna give that nameplate a little bit of a three-dimensional look. And I also outlined the very bottom edge of it. So the bottom edge and the right edge. Next, I'm taking my little detail brush and the white and I'm gonna do a little circle that is going to go inside the upper left part of the purple part of the eye. It's gonna make him look like he's got like little crescent moons inside of his eye. And another thing we can do is if you have any leftover pencil lines from drying earlier, you can take an eraser and erase any of that. This will erase as long as it's not been painted over. And also if there's any parts of your painting that are still drying, you don't wanna do this. You don't wanna run the risk of accidentally smudging your paint while you're erasing things, especially the web up here. Going to erase any leftover pencil lines up here. Something else I'm going to do to touch this up is I'm going to take my 12 bright brush and titanium white. I'm going to dry brush some white on the base of my snow globe. So like right here, I'm just going to take that white, just kind of gently drag that in to highlight that. It really brightens up that left part. But again, not pressing hard. We have some highlighting down here. Really love the effect of dry brushing white in darker areas. Um, it might be tempting to keep going and add more glare on your globe, but you really wanna remember that it's a glass see-through, so we don't want it to be completely covered with glare. I'm gonna do one more thing to my spider. I'm gonna do little black dots inside to complete that bubbly eye look. And then I did something to kind of brighten up our haunted house. I'm going to be using the little three zero brush and the white, and I'm gonna add highlights to the haunted house using titanium white. And I'm just gonna do this on the right side of our house so on the right side of the triangle pieces see that curve only on the right side of each of those 
This is going to create, give it more of a three dimensional look versus a completely flat shadowy look. And then the right side of any of the vertical pieces as well. So there's a vertical piece. You don't have to do it to everything, but adding that little brightness in there helps that shape give it gives it some more dimension. I decided also to kind of change the look of the spider. So I got rid of his fang teeth. Gave him just a simple mouth and I painted his nose orange as well. And the last final touch up is little grass lines. We want to be careful not to paint over any of the glare because the glare needs to be overlapping everything inside of this. But I am doing little grass blades kind of at the bottom. Gives a little bit of texture in that area. And that is it. This is the conclusion of how to paint Halloween snow globe. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.